President Trump has been scrambling for literally any kind of positive achievement as he nears the end of his first 100 days in office. Meanwhile, he and Congress are facing down an imminent deadline to avoid a government shutdown. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Trump is nearing the 100-day milestone with record low approval ratings and a White House in constant chaos, which means today was the perfect day for a jovial, well-rested former President Obama to show up in Chicago for his first public appearance after leaving office and say this. So, uh, what's, what's been going on while I've been gone? <laughs> Everything! <laughs> Everything has been going on. Of course, after that comment, Obama threw on some shades, kite surfed out of the auditorium, and yelled, Somebody give me a Mai Tai! <laughs> but Obama's first post election public appearance was especially well timed because Saturday will mark the 100th day of Trump's presidency, which is traditionally when presidents get their first big report card on their performance so far. And this will shock you most people think he's not doing great. We have our brand new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll to tell us just how Americans think the president is doing as we approach day 100. In short, not well. The worst approval ratings around the 100 day mark for any president in modern times. He laid out a very detailed 100 day contract, he called it Obamacare, tax reform, border wall funding, infrastructure spending, new trade tariffs, labeling China a currency manipulator, ending the Common Core education standards. 100 days in, or one week from 100 days anyway, incomplete at best. None of this. None of this has been done. None of this has been done. <laughs> if this were a movie, it would be called 100 Days and Confused. <laughs> now, the polls did have one bit of good news for Trump, which is that if a new election were held today, Trump would win over Clinton 43% to 40%. And of course, Trump could not help but brag about those numbers. Tweeting yesterday, new polls out today are very good. Considering that much of the media is fake and almost always negative, would still beat Hillary in popular vote. Still? Does he think he won the popular vote the first time? Because I got news for you, buddy. You can't still do something you've never done before. That's like me saying, it's been 100 days, but Rihanna would still go out with me. Thank you for sticking with me. Nonetheless, the 100-day report card is on the way. And like every terrible student, Trump is trying to turn an F into an A. Tweeting last week, no matter how much I accomplished during the ridiculous standard of the first 100 days, and it has been a lot, including Supreme Court, media will kill. Yeah, the 100-day report card is an arbitrary, meaningless political milestone that most people don't actually care about. Most people, that is, except Donald Trump. I propose a contract with the American voter. It's a set of promises for what I'll do in my first 100 days. What follows is my 100-day action plan to make America great again. Just think about what we can accomplish in the first 100 days of a Trump administration. And then, after you've thought about it, tell me what you came up with, because I've got nothing. <laughs> so, as the 100-day milestone nears, Trump has failed to deliver on almost every one of his major legislative promises. Now, there are many reasons for this, including Trump's ignorance about the basic political realities of governing. In fact, Trump is so ignorant, he's ignorant of his own ignorance. For example, he apparently just learned that there were different factions within the Republican Party and talked about it as if it was a brilliant insight, telling the AP in an interview, the Republican Party has various groups, all great people, they're great people, but some are moderate, some are very conservative, and I think it's fine. <laughs> Trump is like an annoying eight-year-old kid who just got home from school. Did you know fish can breathe underwater by using their gills? Yeah, Timmy, I did know that. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Now go suck on your juice box. <laughs> In fact, Trump even seems to have trouble remembering the names of congressional leaders, as we discovered last week, when he kept referring to House Speaker Paul Ryan as Ron before catching himself and trying to save it. My thanks go to Speaker Ryan, who's represented this city for nearly two decades in Congress. And you know where he is? He's with NATO. And so he has a good excuse. And I said, Ron, make sure these countries start paying their bills a little bit more. You know, they're way, way behind, Ron. We have to do, I'm going to talk to you about that, Ron. But, Paul, you're over with NATO, get them to pay their bills. 
I said Ron. I mean, I'm talking to you, Ron. Your name's not Ron. I meant Don. I was talking to myself. Don, you got to get them to pay their bills. Good idea, Don. Thank you, Don. So with less than a week, less than a week until the 100-day deadline, the Trump himself champion, the president, has failed to deliver on nearly every one of his major legislative promises. How could things get any worse? Shut down, showdown. The White House is racing to avoid marking the president's first 100 days in office with a government shutdown. If Congress doesn't send President Trump a government funding bill by midnight on Friday, the government will run out of money and a shutdown would begin. A sticking point, as you may know, is money for the wall along our border with Mexico. He could be the first president in history to face a government shutdown in his first 100 days. Okay, but are we sure the government wasn't shut down already? Because it was reported recently that President Trump has appointed fewer than three dozen of the top 1,000 officials he needs to run the federal government. Under Trump, our federal government is staffed as well as a Dwayne Reed on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I need my heart pills. <laughs> Dwayne? <laughs> Reed? So the White House is requesting money for the border wall and the bill that funds the government. But the crucial question is, will the president veto any bill that does not include money for the wall? The government staying open hangs on this question. So when the AP asked Trump that question point blank, this is what he said. And this is his full, unedited answer. I don't know yet. People want the border wall. My base definitely wants the border wall. My base really wants it. You've been to many of the rallies, OK? The thing they want more than anything is the wall. My base, which is a big base. I think my base is 45%. You know, it's funny. The Democrats, they have a big advantage in the Electoral College. Big, big, big advantage. I've always said the popular vote would be a lot easier than the Electoral College. The Electoral College, but it's a whole different campaign, unintelligible. As opposed to everything up to that point, which had been super intelligible. But let's get back. Let's get back to his answer about the wall. The Electoral College is very difficult for a Republican to win. And I will tell you, the people want to see it. They want to see the wall. I'll tell you one thing. That answer would have definitely made for a much tougher chant at Trump rallies. Who's going to pay for the wall? We don't know yet. People want the border wall. Your base definitely wants the border wall. Your base really wants it. We've been to many of the rallies. Unintelligible. <laughs> now. Trump's answer on the wall might be confusing to you for many reasons, including the fact that, as you may recall, Trump promised repeatedly that Mexico will pay for the wall. And on Sunday, he took to Twitter to settle the discrepancy with his signature bravado, declaring unequivocally that without any hesitation that eventually, but at a later date, so we can get started early, Mexico will be paying in some form for the badly needed border wall. <laughs> Trump's tweets are starting to sound like the fine print on a contest to win a free cruise. Crews will be awarded eventually, but at a later date in some form. The cruise will not necessarily be on a boat, but may in fact be on a raft or a piece of driftwood. While the cruise is free, each passenger must pay a $10,000 floating fee. <laughs> Trump was also asked how much the wall would cost. And again, this is his real answer. I think $10 billion or less. And if I do a super duper higher, better, better security, everything else, maybe it goes a little bit more. Man, even the biggest sucker at the used car lot knows to walk away when the salesman says super duper. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I like you. I'm going to throw in the undercoating for free. I just have to talk to my manager, super duper. <laughs> now, publicly, Republicans in the Trump administration have downplayed the risks of a government shutdown over border wall funding. But privately, they seem excited. One unnamed top White House official told The New Yorker, Next week is going to have quite high drama. It's going to be action-packed. Trust me, it's going to be the battle of the titans. And the great irony here is that the call for the government shutdown will come on, guess what, the 100th day. If you pitch this in a studio, they would say, get out of here, it's too ridiculous. This is going to be a big one. We've all been saying, get out of here, it's too ridiculous for two years, yet here he is. <laughs> get out of here! <laughs> so Trump... So Trump obviously has very few concrete achievements to celebrate in his first 100 days, which, of course, has left Trump to brag about the thing he loves to brag about the most, ratings. In fact, Trump is so enamored by ratings, he's even basing major personnel decisions on them. 
The Washington Post reported yesterday that when the prospect of firing Sean Spicer came up in a recent meeting, Trump replied, I'm not firing Sean Spicer. The guy gets great ratings. Everyone tunes in. <laughs> yeah, everyone tunes in to watch Sean Spicer. For the same reason, this video has 31 million views. <laughs> Incidentally, Trump just made that guy secretary of pools. <laughs> so Trump is facing a 100-day milestone with virtually no successes to brag about, which may be why, when asked by reporters last week about the sudden flurry of activity and how his administration was doing as it neared the 100-day deadline, he resorted to the most meaningless platitudes possible. Can you speak to us briefly about all the legislative action that you're planning next week? How are you going to accomplish all of that? It's going to be great. Well, it'll happen. You're going to do health care and tax it'll reform? Happen. We'll see what happens. No particular rush, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But health care is coming along well. Uh, the government is coming along really well. That's the President of the United States saying government is coming along really well. It's like going home to your wife and saying, hello, wife, our marriage is coming along really well. This has been A Closer Look.